Welcome to the Wickedly Smart Women podcast, featuring stellar conversations with emerging and established Wickedly Smart Women. Thanks for joining us today as we celebrate women who are committed, care deeply, and have the courage to take action and create conscious change all around the world. Now here's your Wickedly Smart host, Angel B. Hartwell. Welcome to another episode of the Wickedly Smart Women podcast, where we celebrate Wickedly Smart Women and provide our listeners with a wealth of wisdom and immediately actionable steps to be smarter, spunkier, and more successful in their impact and their leadership. Today is a very special episode. We are celebrating our first anniversary of launching the show and We are going to be talking today about a few wonderful things, including creating conscious change. And I made the decision that I wanted to have a guest host to interview me for a change. And so I invited and uh, was received well by my dear, dear colleague and friend, Lori Andrus, who was on one of the early episodes, but whose voice you might recognize as the voice of the goddess who introduces each show and takes us out at the end of each show. And so I am so grateful that you are here with me today, Lori, to celebrate the first anniversary of the show. And I am exceptionally grateful to you that you held space for me to build the show, to uh, produce it, to get it out into the world, and you've contributed your voice and your love and your magic and your intention here. And we have a lot to talk about today, and so welcome. Thank you so much for being here and for being the one in the host seat today instead of the guest seat for a change. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. So fun. I love this. Uh, so first, I want to start out by saying congratulations. One year. Let's just... Whoo. Big celebration with that. Yeah. <laughs> We're having a little celebration 40, party. 47 here. countries, 47 countries <sighs> around the world are downloading. So, and oh, I forgot to say, Weekly Smart Women has been selected as a finalist in the People's Choice Podcast Awards. I don't know whether I even Ooh. told you that. Whew. No, you know, but I read it when you sent over a couple of notes before, and I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> It was a part of me that was like, oh my gosh, I had I haven't heard this. So so congratulations, because it really it takes a lot to create a show like this and to ha- to show up consistently and to connect with the community. And so I really I want to celebrate you. And then I also want to celebrate all of the wickedly smart women who are showing up every week and tuning in and allowing their creative, vibrant juices to be activated and connected and nourished and lit up in the world because this is like, there's this beautiful cycle that's happening between yourself as the host and the, the people you're interviewing, as well as the community that's growing. So yay, big celebration there. Yay. Yeah. Five Ooh. claps for us. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Uh, so it's really fun to be here as the host today. And I think, you know, the first place I really would love to start is with this topic of creating conscious change and knowing that you, because we have personal relationship and, you know, from a place of colleagues and friends, and um, we work together in varying capacities. I know the changes you've undergone recently, and I would love to invite you to share a bit about some of the conscious change that you've been creating in your world. Mm, Yeah, well, you know, I think the main biggest change I've created is changing my name. And so I got very clear this year as a result of some inner work that I was doing where there were areas in my life that weren't working. And so like one of the steps of the wealthy life method, which is my signature program that I offer to people, the first step is to identify what's not working, (laughs) like what's not working. (laughs) And so I've been through lots and lots and lots of changes in my life. And there were still areas of my life that weren't working. And as a result of my willingness to not only, you know, admit that to myself, right? I think that's the first step, 
too. It's, you know, it's really, it's what's not working and admitting to yourself that it's not working. As a result of that, I ended up through a series of, you know, coincidences and synchronicities and so forth, being guided to look at my name. And my name was created out of a, the name that everyone knows me as here on the podcast, Emerald Peaceful Green Forest. I was created out of a pretty significant trauma period in my life, but it came to me and it came through me from the earth. And so when it arrived four years ago, I said yes. And I changed my name to Emerald Peaceful Green Forest. And yet there were still some areas where things were not so peaceful in my life. And nothing nearly as challenging as what had gone on before, but enough that I was willing to look at it and say, yeah, this isn't working. So what can we do to to change it? And so now I have a new name. Yeah. Yeah. So would you like to share that or would you like me to introduce you? I think you should introduce me. Yeah, because that feels like so much more real (laughs) if you're hosting, right? (laughs) Right. You know, I think over the last year, you know, as listeners, you've all come to know Emerald in that beautiful, amazing name. You've come to know both her fire and her peacefulness. And as she embarks on this new chapter of her life, and as she has made conscious change, I want to reintroduce her to you as Angel B. Hartwell. So welcome, welcome as Angel B. Hartwell. Mm. Yay. So I can now say this is your host, Angel (laughs) B. Hartwell. And so for listeners who've been with me for a year, Moving forward from here, that's what you're going to hear. This is your host, Angel B. Hartwell, and I'm sure that we're going to bring a lot of amazing guests, and we're going to continue to create conscious change in the world through our own embodiment of that. Like, I really recognize myself now (laughs) more than ever before as a role model of creating conscious change, like literally using my own life as a canvas. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love it. I love that you turned that mirror of reflection inward. You know, I think very often in life when we're when we're in a place of challenge and struggle, we don't always do that. And I think that to me is one of the things that defines a creative age leader and that capacity for introspection, reflection, looking within and being really real with ourselves about what's working, what's not working, where do I need support? What do I need to let go of? How can I shift and change? And, you know, this is, this is something that is like your zone, your zone is creative age leadership. And so I'm curious if you could just talk to us a bit about what that is, what that means Mm. to be a creative age leader. Yeah, great question. Thank you, Lori. So I believe that we are at the dawning of a new age. And if you look at a historical record, right, we had the agrarian age, And we had the Bronze Age, and we had the Stone Age, and we had the Neanderthals, and we had the Cro-Magnons, and we had like all of these different ages. And in the late 1800s, mid-1800s time frame, the Industrial Age arrived. And then in the late like 60s, 70s, the Information Age started to arrive. And we are really at a turning point not only in the ages where I believe we're now at the dawn of the creative age, but I actually believe that the creative age is going to be sustained for an exceptional period of time, right? That each of these other ages were leading up to this pivotal moment in history and in the history of the planet where everyone is being activated and awakened to their innate creative capacity and their innate power to literally create anything that they desire. They can create their own business. They can create their relationships in any way that works for them. They can create their life. You know, some people are creating a life where they were born as man and they're transgendering into women and then they're transgendering back into men again. The possibilities are just endless. And so part of what I believe is is required right now is the leaders 
who are rising up, leaders like yourself, leaders like myself, leaders like a lot of the wickedly smart women who are being interviewed on this show, who are willing to put the stake in the ground and say, I am here to create from this you know, new soil, I am here to create from the rubble of the old world that's literally collapsing around us. I am willing to look at all the now freeing up energy and the freeing up resources that are going to be available as a result of all of the old structures and belief patterns and thought forms and institutions and uh, systems that are in collapse. I mean, we can't deny that it's all in collapse. The healthcare system is in collapse. The justice system is in collapse. The governmental systems are in collapse. Everything is in collapse. And so, you know, we can either be collapsed ourselves as a result of deep attachment to the old, or we can liberate ourselves and acknowledge that our greatest gift and our greatest contribution is our creative power and then just lead from there. Mm. Mm -hmm. So I bet everyone's listening and they're going, um, yes, 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 it is time. (laughs) And, you know, I think one of the things that when I look at myself during this time where so many systems and structures are collapsing around us, and I'm aware of my own not only desire, but capacity to really rise in creative ways and in community and leading into this new era, I find that there's, there's places where I get stuck or like kind of, there's like little hiccups or, you know, things where that um, I'm not on path with that, where I'm like pulled off track. And so I'm curious if you could just speak to that a little bit, because I'm sure your listeners are, are going, yeah, please help me to just kind of see where am I, where am I pausing or getting myself stuck? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I love that, Lori. And one of the things I want to say is, you know, it's interesting because a lot of the work that I've done with myself and with my clients over the years was about getting unstuck. And the unstucking that we were doing was to you know, to free them up to be able to become what they were actually born to be, right? To really free them to their destiny. And I feel like we are at a place now where in some cases we are actually being asked to slow down significantly, right? Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times people have come to me saying, I'm stuck, you know, I want to make a zillion dollars, or I want to be famous, or I want to be X, Y, Z. And what I'm aware of right now is a lot of that is still anchored in the old paradigm. It's still anchored in the old systems. It's still anchored in the old belief systems. And so maybe now in the creative age, it's less about being stuck and more about acknowledging that I'm freed up now and I have all this energy available to me. How do I want to channel it in positive and generative ways? And so maybe it's less about getting unstuck and more about getting the clarity of what it is that is the calling for this now released energy that is getting unstuck globally, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Big chills with that. (laughs) Good. Well, we're going to take a short break on the chills then because we're actually already at the break time. So Weekly Smart Women, I'm going to do the the break because I have the notes. (laughs) Weekly Smart Women, we actually would love to call you forth and invite you to think about and to contemplate and to invest in the creation of your own wealthy life. And um, to that end, I actually have a quiz that I'd love to have you consider taking. You can go to quiz.wealthylifementor.com, and I think you'll hear that in the commercial too. But I really encourage you to take that quiz because it will give you some clarity around just what level you're at. Are you still stuck? Are you loosening up? Or are you at that place where you're so fully aware that, okay, I'm so resourced for what it is I'm creating next, and I really would like the support to get 
even more clear and more structure around that. So please take that quiz. And I want to thank all of our listeners who are downloading, rating, and reviewing. We are welcoming thousands of downloads from all over the world. As I mentioned at the top of the show, we have 47 countries that are downloading. So I want to make a special shout out today to the state of New Hampshire, which is where this show is hosted out of. And I also want to make a special shout out to the state of Wisconsin and send lots of love over in that direction, the heartland uh, where Lori is right now. And uh, of course, to all of our listeners around the world, thank you, thank you, thank you. We will be right back after this break. The Wickedly Smart Women podcast is brought to you by the Wealthy Life Mentor. Women, are you on the edge knowing that life is calling you to make a change? Are you ready to be part of the evolution of what it means to be a wickedly smart woman creating your wealthy life by design, a life that is an extraordinary work of art? Angel B. Hartwell, the Wealthy Life Mentor, is hired by women in transition. Women just like you who want to break through to their brilliance, become clear on the value of their wisdom, and embody a beauty-filled, balanced life of shameless self-expression. Discover your Wealthy Life readiness by taking the quiz at quiz.wealthylifementor.com. And we're back. Hey, Lori. I'm so okay. so excited to have you here. And I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to celebrate the first one. Uh-huh. <laughs> one full year. Yes, yes. So I'm really enjoying this conversation as we're, we're sinking into that conversation about conscious change. But then, you know, the piece that actually really jumped out for me was around that creating awareness within ourselves about making that shift in awareness from the feeling of being stuck and having the awareness that, oh, we're not stuck anymore and that we're actually living in a new paradigm. We're living in a new timeline and we have energy and momentum to create change, to move forward. So I'm curious, you know, if you can talk about what that means to be like really in alignment to what does that look like in action? How do we live that? Yeah, I love that. So this um, this little piece comes out of my uh, Wealthy Life by Design Align Your Compass group intensive, which I am in the process of beginning to, I'm opening up for people to enroll in that. So if there's anyone who has an interest in having a conversation with me or my team about enrolling in the Wealthy Life by Design Align Your Compass group intensive, this comes right out of that body of work. And so when we get clear that we, we are ready to create conscious change and we want to have that knowing what we want, that clarity of knowing what it is that we want, well, then we need to put ourselves into a structure that allows it to happen in a way that our energy is channeled efficiently, right? And so uh, this is the align your compass work. And aligning our compass requires that we do some things. And the first thing, and we're going to use the five letters align, the first thing (laughs) is to ask questions instead of having all you know thinking you have to have all the answers i actually just wrote about this yesterday that i grew up thinking i had to have all the answers and we were rewarded for having the answers and that's not going to work in the creative age because when we're in creativity we're in the realm of infinite possibility when you're in the realm of infinite possibility there's infinite answers so there is no right answer there is only the question which then leads you to the direction, right? So the first thing we want to do is we want to ask questions. And often that requires us to ask a leader, another person for help, right? A mentor for help. Mm -hmm. So that would be the first step. Beautiful. And then the next step, the L, is to let love lead. So when I say that, anybody who is feeling any resonance with me Oh my God, if you feel like excited about having a conversation with me, if you feel like, oh my God, I would really love to work with that person, well then, you know, take the action, take the action, right? Let love be the leader though, not fear, not scarcity, not 
I'm stuck and I can't get out. You know, I need a rescuer. Those are not the people that I want to be working with, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe Lori's your mentor. Please feel free to look at Lori's work. If you're listening to the sound of her voice and you're like, oh my God, I love the sound of that woman's voice. Lori sounds amazing. Then let love lead you in that direction, but really be moving from the heart, right? Moving from the heart. You know, um, I, I want to ask, I want to just tip into that just a yeah. tiny bit more because I think very often one of the things I hear from people is that they've lived their life wanting to be led by their heart wanting to be led by love. And they've had confusion around that. So what at this time, because I really feel like this is such a unique time, what is like a really great tell for them so that they can go, ah, yes, this truly is my heart and I can trust my heart. Oh, such a great question. Well, you know, the interesting thing about that, Lori, is that we actually are all extremely unique and your heartbeat is like your fingerprint right? Mm -hmm. So I can speak for me. I can speak for myself. When I'm letting love lead, I feel so excited in my body, right? My body feels vitality. I feel like, you know, probably a maple tree in the springtime when the sap is rising, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's the best analogy I can use. It's that moment when you're like, I just know this is my direction. It's that full body knowing. It is that I'm willing to go in and put my whole heart into this, right? Mm -hmm. It's the not having the escape hatches. We've had long <laughs> conversations about escape hatches, you and I, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And our conditioning and our programming and our habitual patterns are really freaking tenacious. They can be freaking tenacious yeah. and sneaky. Those patterns can be stinking sneaky. And so, especially around having the escape routes, but whenever you have an escape route, it's literally like a pinhole in a balloon. So when you are attempting to move that energy forward, if you've got this pinhole in the balloon, eventually it's going to deflate. It's just, it can't not. So it's about really being ruthless with yourself, ruthless, mm -hmm. and honest with yourself, and then only taking action when you're inspired. Beautiful. Right? Yeah. And that's yeah. the third step of aligning your thoughts. Awesome. awesome. Only take action when it's inspired. Don't take action just because somebody thinks that you should or you feel obligated to uh, or, you know, society has a certain expectation of you or whatever. Those actions are actually fruitless. Mm -hmm. But if you take inspired action, then even if it seems illogical, right? often especially if it seems illogical, <laughs> like changing your name <laughs> for three times, right? <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Yeah, th that's what's real. Those mm -hmm. inspired actions are what's real. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. And then, and then the, the last two steps, just to drop them in quick, is yeah. get grounded in order to grow. And that's a lot of the work that you and I have been doing together over the last several years as colleagues. You know, I've been supporting you in that. You've been supporting me in that. Get grounded in a community. You know, be grounded in the Wickedly Smart Women community. Be grounded in community with a mentor. Be grounded in community with a small group if you have an interest in my small group intensive. But get grounded. And especially go outside and take your shoes off and put your feet right on the earth. That kind of grounded, right? Hug a tree. Be in nature. Yes. Yeah. And yes. then, and then the, the final thing is what, what's your next visible step? Like I think a lot of times, especially visionaries, we get the big vision and then we're like, yes, to the big vision. And we, our love is leading. And then we can get overwhelmed by the complexity that we think we see. And so it's, it's part of the work is to just get to the next, what's the next visible step and then take that step. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. I love it. Oh, so that is authentic alignment. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> mm. So I'm curious, like how leaders in the community can find out more about how to work with you or how to create conscious change and a yeah. lovely life by design. Mm. Well, you know, you can start by taking the quiz, go to quiz.wealthylifementor.com. Now be part of the community, the Wickedly Smart Women community. This year ahead is a year where we are really seriously looking at 
how are we building out the community? And I'm actually asking for help myself. You know, step A, right? The first one, <laughs> ask for help. How are we building out this community? Both energetically as well as I have somebody who has come onto my team who is eager. She's really eager to build out the community and to be highly visible in the community. And so we're going to encourage you to go to our Facebook page. We're going to have a Wickedly Smart Woman page on LinkedIn and put your name into our mailing list so that you can get more information about some of the things that we're doing. We're probably going to have a challenge coming up soon in the next few weeks, uh, October. She's working on that right now. And, um, you know, there's going to be a lot of surprises too. One thing I have in my cupboard right now that's cooking or on my back burner that's cooking is a card deck, an Oracle card deck. So yeah, books, Yummy. Oracle card decks, art, <laughs> there's going to be all kinds of stuff coming out in the next year. And, and so, yeah, get yourself grounded in our community. Take what works for you and leave the rest. For some of you, it's going to be a baby bird bite. For others of you, you are going to want to be all in 1000%, no back doors. And then there will be people that will be in between and will be progressing. And so our intention is to have space for all of that. Yeah. Beautiful. Ah, fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. And for those of you who don't know, Angel is an amazing artist. She has beautiful, beautiful art. And uh, over the last year, you've really done a big series of paintings. Do we have time for you to share just a little bit about that? Yeah, well, yeah. sure. Um, anybody who's interested in my art, which is a separate conversation, but you can find it. If you go to, I actually, my main site, wealthylifementor.com, uh, you can look at my blog, which is uh, right from the heart blog where a lot of books are going to be coming out of there. My art is at Art for the Awakened Heart, and I've done a series of paintings called The Flow Codes. And for those of you who are energetically attuned, all you have to do is look at those things and you're going to get an activation. So, But it would be really great if you decided that you would like to get one in the form of a shower curtain or a coffee mug or a journal or a reproduction of the print or the originals. The originals are also mm -hmm. sale. So yeah, artforTheAwakenedHeart.com. Uh, or at pretty much everything is available through the main site, Wickedly, um, yeah, WealthyLifeMentor.com. Beautiful. So, yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah. And thank you for bringing in the art because, mm -hmm. yeah, the off. so that's what one, I want to just close by saying that Angel B. Hartwell, the embodiments that I will be bringing forth myself are author, artist, and alchemist. So, mm -hmm. yeah, those are my three main focal points for the embodiment of Angel B. Hartwell. And those are the areas of my life where, you know, that's my wealthy life by design, right? Yeah. Is the areas of my life where I get the greatest joy and feel the most satisfaction. So, yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. So any final words of wisdom that you have for our audience today? Yeah. Um, keep tuning in and mostly tuning into your own heart. Please keep sharing wisdom with each other and please keep weaving those threads of relationship with the people that are most enthusiastic about being a part of your life and weed like crazy weed out like crazy everyone who's not yeah and those are just some of the ways that we can welcome wealth and remember that wealth is more than just money it is the sum total of all of the resources that we have available to us and so yeah let's all create a wealthy life by design together mm, beautiful beautiful thank yeah. you so much angel thank you for bringing us into into your world and the magic and and the conscious change that you're creating in the world and um and the the beautiful opportunities that are available to connect with and work with and be in community with you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you for hosting me today on my show. I loved it. And uh, I wanted to say, listeners, we do love feedback. So uh, please let us know what you thought of today's show by calling into our listener line. That'll be in the show notes or sending questions or guest suggestions to listeners at wickedlysmartwomen.com. We might even give you a shout out on the show. Thanks for tuning in. Keep your ears open and remember you are a wonderful woman. Thanks for tuning in, downloading, and listening. Be sure to rate and review Wickedly Smart Women on Apple Podcasts and share with other women who can benefit from today's episode. 
Wickedly Smart Women is the premier podcast series for informing, activating, and inspiring the leader who carries profound wisdom and knows that now is the time to welcome wealth. We welcome your feedback and guest suggestions and invite you to subscribe to our mailing list to be notified of each new episode at wickedlysmartwomen.com.